Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Street photography, what does that mean to you? Before I talk about what makes a good street photo, I want to give a base definition of what I think street photography is. Now, a lot of people have so many different ideas, so many feelings about this topic of street photography and how they define it. But before I give my own thoughts, I wanna ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT says, street photography is a genre of photography that focuses on capturing candid and unposed scenes and people in public spaces, typically in urban environments like streets, parks, markets, and other public spaces. Now, I guess that makes sense as a general definition of what street photography is. But for me, I see street photography as documenting our everyday lives using the mediums that we have in our hands on a daily basis. It could be on your phone, it could be on your camera, it could be on anything that you use to capture images on a daily basis. And it doesn't have to be of people. Now, in this video, what I actually want to talk about is what makes a good street photo. And for me, there are three things that make a good street photo. Story, exposure, and composition. The first thing being story. When it comes to story, story is something that draws the viewer in. When a viewer is looking at an image, you're looking at what are you trying to tell me with this? What is this image supposed to be telling me? How am I supposed to feel? What am I supposed to be taking away from this? Now, if an image is a good image, a story should be told. Is it a sad story? Is it a good story? Is it an exciting story? Is it supposed to make me feel happy? When a viewer is looking at an image, and, it, and, and I'm talking about really, really good images here, they should be able to take something away from it from off of one photo. Now, sometimes when you're a street photographer, you need a couple of images back to back to back in order to tell a good story. But sometimes all you get is one. Now, having that good, strong one image is very, very difficult. Now, the, the top, top, top photographers in history have that one photo that you can think about in your mind. But sometimes we don't even get that one good photo ever in our lives. Now, as a good street photographer, you should be able to tell a story of multiple images. But having one good image that tells a story is super, super important as well. And when it comes to telling a story with an image, it's actually really, really difficult in order to get that done. We need to be able to view our world in a certain way in order to see the image, take the image in the snapshot and be able to tell a good and proper story. And that comes with a lot of experience, comes with a lot of time and just comes with being out there a lot. The second thing is exposure. Exposure is actually really important when it comes to viewing the image and when it comes to telling the story and also when it comes to printing your image. Exposure is very, very important. When it comes to exposure, having proper exposure, making sure that the viewer is able to see what's going on within your image is really, really important because if you can't see what's going on within the image, is it a good photo? Definitely not. You can't have underexposed images. Again, unless that's your style, but if it's your style, then it's your style. That's an artistic style. But if that's not your style, if that's not what you're going for, then don't do that. Don't underexpose. Don't even overexpose by too much because then it just looks weird or it looks off. Like a viewer should be able to just be focused on what's going on within the image, especially when it comes to street photography and not be thinking about, oh, is this the photographer's personal style? They should just be looking at the image and trying to get something from that image. In my opinion, that's what makes a good photo. And the third thing, and the one that I feel like is the most important is composition. Composition. Is your composition good? Is your composition strong? There's a reason why there are rules when it comes to photography. The rules of composition, the rule of thirds, the golden rule, and the other rules that are out there that I keep in my mind right now. All these rules are in place because people have studied photography and they said these are what make good photos. Now, once you've learned all these rules of photography, all these rules of composition, feel free to break them. Feel free to not even think about them at all. Feel free to not keep your subject centered within the image. Feel free to not put your your subject on the rule of thirds, on the, on, the, on the axis of the thirds. Like, I think about that a lot. But for me, I don't think about that too much to the point where it stops me from actually shooting. When I see something that I really, really like, actually in the streets, most of the time, you don't even get the opportunity to compose your image that much. As people are passing and things are going on, all you're doing is just shooting. You're just hoping for the best and you're just shooting. Try to keep them in the center, try to keep them in frame. It doesn't even matter. Right? As long as you capture something that's going on within the streets. But if you have an opportunity to compose your image properly, 
Try to put them on the rule of thirds. Try to keep them centered. Try to think about the composition before you shoot the image. And if you go on the same spots, go to the same places a lot, try to compose your images in a way where you get good light. Try to compose your images in a way where you can get a good photo and it can tell something more of a story. It's properly exposed and you get a good photo, right? These things are important because it helps you in telling a the story. These things are important because when you're looking at your images later, you'll be able to tell something's off, something's wrong. And if you have a good composition with your image, it goes a long way. It does really go a long way. I promise you it does. Now, you don't need all of these three things in order to tell a good photo. You can have one of them. You can have two of them. But definitely, if you have three of them, you're on your way, 90% there, to getting a good photo. These are my thoughts on this particular topic. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about what makes a good street photo. Let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, make sure you stay safe, make sure you shoot film, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.